Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three of this news bulletin for today. I'm going to just continue here. We left off with this article, Iran says it blocks cyber attack on oil platforms. So we're done with Iran and Syria. And we'll move on to Iraq um, and other uh, countries, including uh, areas, including Asia. Maliki, Iraq won't become part of Syrian civil war. So he says here they're going to avoid flaring fire near our borders. Speaking at a conference in Moscow, the prime minister said that he insisted that the government is determined to maintain a policy of non-interference with its neighbors and will not get involved in the ongoing Sir Syrian civil war. And we know that uh, they were trying to do a deal. Iraq was the central government with uh, the Kurdistan regional government and Shell, and that kind of broke down. Russia and Iraq are sealing up a $4.2 billion arms contract deal. It made it the country's largest arms supplier after the United States. Maliki said in Russia's foreign ministry mansion on Monday that Iraq needs Russia's help in defense and military areas and needs arms to defend itself and fight terrorism in the country. Someone made an interesting comment saying foolish Mideastern leaders stop buying their arms as those arms will never save you when the U.S. and NATO attack you in the future. The U.S., China, and Russia have a secret and invisible alliance, which is a bargain of money. It is kind of interesting why they would just allow them to have an arms contract all of a sudden, the West that is, after, you know, all, after all that with Iraq. It says now the USA is giving the Russians that billion dollar contract in Iraq and that's why the Russians are happy. It's just the same old arms sale business. Another says look at how much these people are forced to spend their national wealth to defend themselves against Blackwater, CIA, MI6, and Mossad thugs. Report says Turkish jets strike a PKK base in Iraq. Turkish jets have struck suspected Kurdish rebel targets in two separate cross-border raids in northern Iraq, Turkish news agency reported, prompting Iraq to vow to take diplomatic steps against Ankara for violating its sovereignty. With relations between Turkey and Iraq de deteriorating, Baghdad recently warned Turkey against military operations in its territory. Baghdad said they're going to rethink allowing Turkish military bases in their country. The foreign minister our Foreign Affairs Committee said that there are 16 Turkish military bases on Iraq's territory along the border with Turkey. So the committee said they will see intensive steps aimed at resolving the problem of Turkish military incursions. Next up, sovereignty curtailed. Armenia agrees to ask the CSTO permission for hosting other states' military facilities. On October 15th, the Russian president will travel to Turkey, where he's expected to sign a number of important agreements, and then with Turkish uh, Prime Minister Erdogan, he will arrive in Baku for the summit in the Economic Cooperation Organization, which is also expected to result in the signing of important documents. So we were just talking about the, uh, the weapons with Iraq and stuff like that, you know, in Russia. So this will give us some more background. It says most of these documents relate to economic cooperation, but the Russian, Azerbaijan, and Russian-Turkish friendship is also known to cover the military sphere. For instance, last year Russia sold the S-300 anti-aircraft missiles to Azerbaijan, thereby restoring the balances of forces in the region that it had originated before it sold to Armenia missiles that can only be intercepted by the S-300 complexes. In fact, Russia is friends with Azerbaijan, with which Armenia is not still in a state of undeclared war, as well as with Turkey, with which Armenia has no diplomatic relations and border with, drawn by the Cars and Moscow Treaties of 1921, it does not recognize. At the same time, in military terms, Armenia continues to fully trust Russia. In August 2010, Armenia and Russia signed an agreement that implies continued mu Russian military presence on Armenian soil until about the middle of the century, as well as Russia's responsibility for the security of Armenia. And finishing up, this uh, caused a negative reaction of a significant part of the Armenian public uh, when many experts saying that Armenia, as an independent state, must not entrust its security to Russia, but should it guarantee it by itself as the constitution of Armenia requires. So Armenia is not entitled to host military forces or other infrastructure of other sti states without permission. Then there's an article saying that the Afghan government could collapse. The editor's note from Stratris says, What Afghanistan government? There is no Afghanistan government. There is some sort of narco state government in Kabul. NATO may retain bases in the country, but the Taliban will eventually control most of the country. Karzai is praying that U.S. diplomats can cut a deal and keep their mini-narco state from becoming a mass of ashes and bones. 
Pakistan, China, and Uzbekistan are very worried that the violence may spill over their borders. I saw this uh, article, U.S.-led drone crashes in southern Afghanistan. So it wouldn't be that big of a deal, right? Oh, another drone crash in Afghanistan. But uh, I've been making this link because um, it was made before a couple months ago, and I just thought I'd check it, and here we go. Helicopter downed in Syria. So October 6th. 2012, a helicopter was down in Syria. This is government forces. The Syrian government forces helicopter shot down in Syria. So when that happens, usually a helicopter, U.S. helicopter, goes down in Afghanistan. Then Jordan, incapable without backing of West and Zionists, says analysts, the uh, king of Jordan, King Abdullah II, has dissolved the country's parliament and called for early elections amid popular protests in the country. Jordan was established as a buffer zone between the Zionist entity after the British mandate decided to slice Palestine between the east with Jordan and the west, which is the Zionist entity, and Jordan to play as a buffer between the Muslims and Arabs to protect Israel. Any political maneuver in Jordan has to have the blessing of the Zionists and imperialists in the Middle East, and that is the function of Jordan. And Muslim Brotherhood influence, the next Arab domino to fall may be Jordan from October 8th. This other article is from October 7th. Editors note the Muslim Brotherhood once upon a time did their business in secrecy, but the Arab Spring changed everything, and now they can network with their fraternal brothers and damage stable, secular Arab nations. This is what Webster Tarpley calls fellow travelers, right? Foreigners, foreign uh, mercenaries and all that. This cannot sit well with the bureaucrats and policy wonks in Washington and, of course, our buddies at Brookings Institute and think tanks. In their eyes, this is a national security threat. The Muslim Brotherhood is one of the largest groups in the Arab world. They have just begun to move, and now Egypt is under their control. Followed by Egypt and Syria, the Muslim Brotherhood is trying to overthrow another secular regime, King Abdullah II of Jordan, perhaps the most moderate in the Arab world. The king recently agreed to the dissolution of the parliament in early elections, <clears throat> Excuse me, but that is not enough. They seek a change of government which a monarch would remain purely symbolic function and that the real power would go to the premier Islamists. Of course, this will have disastrous consequences on the U.S. and Zionist Israel. Remember this article. And then to Central Asia, we have Kyrgyzstan. The Kyrgyz police repel protesters seeking the ouster of the government. This is from October 3rd. October 3rd. Then I found a newer article on Kyrgyzstan. Their opposition MPs charged with attempted coup over gold mine. So the MPs are awaiting trial and may face up to 20 years in jail. The defense lawyer slams the charges as politically motivated, right? Passions simmer in Kyrgyzstan's rest of south and attacks on Canadian firm may scare foreign investors. So the Kyrgyzstan court charged three opposition nationalist members of the parliament with attempting to stage a coup after they led a crowd which cried or what is that? Try to storm the government headquarters in a protest over the Canadian-owned gold mine. Calls to nationalize the largest gold mine operated in Central Asia by the Western-based concern uh, risk scaring off potential investors needed to revive a shrinking economy. And then to Africa, sorry to skip around here, but um, Libya. Shadow fighting erupts over Gaddafi, saying that, you know, it's, uh, it's a hellhole right now. Civilians in the town of Bani Walid, um, are facing a humanitarian crisis as Libyan security forces lay siege to the stronghold of Gaddafi's supporters, cutting off water, food, and medical supplies. Then we have um, local doctors uh, told Amnesty International on October 4th that three vehicles carrying medical supplies, oxygen, medical personnel were prevented from reaching the city by a group of armed men who set up a checkpoint on the main road from the capital of Tripoli. Residents said that the vehicles carrying petrol, water, and food supplies from the capital have also been turned back at the same checkpoint in the previous four days. These people have given Libya a lot of problems, and the town has been infiltrated by foreign elements. The bad blood between Mizrat and Bali Wa Beni Walid goes back to the revolution when people from the two towns fought on different sides. Mizratans fought to overthrow Gaddafi's government and fought against Bani Walid loyalists to Gaddafi. This is following the kidnapping of a number of Mizratans and Bani Walid, which... Uh, Bani Walid loyalists say it's in retaliation for the abduction of hundreds of men from their town. A number of bloody confrontations between the two cities averted at the last minute following high-level government intervention. I wonder if that's those CIA or the, uh, or the Marines or the Delta Force on the ground. More than a thousand soldiers from the revolutionary brigades from across Libya, heavily supported by Mizratan brigades, have joined the National Army at four camps surrounding the Gaddafi stronghold. 
with commanders preparing for military assault. Residents of the besieged city are begging for international intervention. Are they going to get it? I don't know. From the looks of it, like I covered in the last videos, the U.S. has pulled out, man. They're out of there. They even left, you know, documents behind. So according to the Libya Herald, the petitioners claim that pro-government armed militias were trying to indiscriminately kill large numbers of people in Bani Wali because of the city's history and support of Gaddafi. Blackwater Founders Mercenary Army Abandoned in Somali Desert. This is an interesting uh, article. came out of nowhere. It's like well-armed fighters left to fend for themselves as the UAE pulls funds. So they pulled the funds for the uh, terror or mercenary army in northern Somalia. It says the UAE has gotten sick of throwing money at the operation and pulled the plug. So the mercenaries are sitting in a secret desert base with potentially millions of dollars in heavy weapons illegally smuggled into Somalia and nothing to do. This is crazy. It says they won't likely stay on that base for long as those familiar with the situation say the fighters who were not ideologically motivated to join the anti-piracy fight in the first place are liable to take their weapons and head out looking for new employers with pirates among the likely bidders. Then I saw this article. Al-Shabaab preparing for a last stand in Mogadishu, says sources. Says Al-Shabaab fighters are making a desperate last stand in the Mogadishu area. The sources say the militants have nowhere to run or being forced to flee from many towns. They've decided to launch an attack on the troops of the AU and the trans transitional federal government. I was about to say transnational, right? Yeah, I can't confuse what Libya's regime change and, and Syria's regime change. It's all the same thing, right? The these trans transitional or transnational uh, militias and governments. It says tensions are running high in, in the city, and it appears that the Al-Shabaab fighters are ready to go out in a blaze of glory if necessary. So I found it interesting that uh, Blackwater and uh, their mercenary army is abandoned in the Somali desert, and then all of a sudden Al-Shabaab is going to get a, a, a one last fight here. U.S.-backed Nigerian military kills 30 civilians. Nigerian forces killed 30 people with heavy machine guns and set fire to up to 50 homes and businesses in the area says that the U.S. supported Nigerian soldiers killed up to 30 people on Monday using assault rifles, having machine guns monitored on armored personnel carriers. The killings occurred in the northern city and the spiritual home of Islamist sect Boko Haram, and while reportedly a response to a bombing earlier Monday that killed a lieutenant. That's what the response was uh, to a bombing. So they just went around and started killing everybody. They went on and said that an AP reporter counted the dead while on tour of the still smoldering neighborhood. They saw no weapons or evidence that the dead belonged to a sect. The killings likely will further antagonize the population already alienated by checkpoints, security force harassment, and the threat of being killed by soldiers who are targets for the sect's increasingly bloody guerrilla attacks. And at first they, they said that the report said that they went around whipping people, and then eventually I guess that wasn't uh, fun enough, so they went around and just started shooting people. Lighting stuff on fire. Philippines. U.S. start 10-day joint drill in Luzon Island. So you have U.S. and Philippine Marines simulating an amphibious landing during a joint drill on the beaches. So the American and Philippine Marines have launched a joint maneuver in the northern island of Luzon amid a territorial dispute between the South Asian country and China. So it went on down here, and it says that technological advancement is at the heart of its goal. It also said that... Um, that's part of these disputes are over rich energy deposits in the South China Sea. Now, Afghanistan, we're talking about how it's failing and stuff like that, has to do with uh, uh, minerals, right? Rare minerals, stuff like that, and the West wanting to compete with China over uh, te technology and stuff like that, producing all these little gadgets. Of course, when that actually starts to occur in the West, well, you have a bunch of desperate workers who are ready to work like nothing for nothing, right? I saw I saw a term or a word used. It was called the, uh, the China being the workshop of the world. You could say what a uh, sweatshop of the world. So they want U.S. to get in on, get in on that. So they had to bring down our standard of living eventually, so that we'll be able to do this same stuff. North Korea's leader says they can hit the U.S. mainland with it. This is in response to the U.S. giving South Korea permission to extend the range of its missiles. The target being, of course, China and Japan, who are wary of the move. 53rd Tibet has self-immolated 
and the poet writer killed himself to protest against Chinese rule. Even four Tibetans have been jailed for covering reporting on the self-immolation. And if you do survive a self-immolation, they'll haul your charred body off to a jail cell. Venezuela outmaneuvers Western designs to overthrow national sovereignty. Any Obama honors Hugo Chavez? No, Caesar Chavez. They to redirect attention. Thank you.